Are you living your life on purpose each day, working toward the purpose you feel that God has for your life? And your purpose can change at different seasons in your life. One of my daughters homeschools her girls. And that's been her purpose, to be a good mom and to homeschool those girls. But now they're 13 years old and God is changing her purpose and she's going to start going out and doing some speaking because she really wants to help people. Give yourself to what you're supposed to do in this season of your life. Bloom where you're planted and don't get so addicted to your plan that when God wants to change it, you won't let go of it and go do something else. And don't minimize whatever it is that God wants you to do right now. Don't minimize that. You may be taking care of elderly parents. Can I tell you something? I think that touches God's heart about as deep as you can touch it. Because let me tell you something. Taking care of elderly parents can be a real job. I know. Because you know what? Now listen to me. It's what we do behind the scenes that affects the power and the anointing that we carry out in public. Do you have a plan? Are you able to follow through with your plans? How many days do you have in which you don't accomplish what you set out to do? How easy do you lose your focus? <laughs> Are you leaving a legacy? Here's a good one. Will the world miss you when you're gone? What have you done with your life so far? You know, these are sobering questions. But we need to be sober sometimes. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be well balanced, sober of mind. Be vigilant and cautious at all times. For that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion, roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. And you know what? If we don't wake up, sleepy Christians, walk carefully, which means the Greek word is circumspectly, and that word means to walk looking all around you, being careful. It actually has a, a word picture connected to it of walking barefoot in a field of thorns. So how many of you would take your shoes off, go out into a field of thorns and just... <laughs> we wouldn't do that, but sometimes that's the way we live life. Amen? No, I mean, you'd be like, is this the right thing? Is this the right thing? Is this the right thing? I'm just asking today if we could start living a little more carefully. How many warnings do you ignore? You say, warnings? What do you mean? Well, let's just say that your back has hurt for five years and you've never bothered to go see why. Well... When your body hurts somewhere consistently, it's warning you that something's wrong. And if you take care of little problems, they won't become big problems. Thank you for your excitement. All right, I'll just move on to something else. We had better seize the day before the devil seizes our day. 1 Corinthians 3.10 says, According to the grace of God bestowed on me like a skillful architect and a master builder. I laid the foundation and now another man is building upon it, but let each man be careful how he builds. There's the word again, careful or circumspectly. Paul is saying, I taught you about Christ. I've laid a foundation in your life. Now you're going to be building a life. Be careful how you build. And if you go actually study those scriptures out, it says that we can build with wood, hay, straw, stubble, gold, or silver. How are we building our life? I spent so many years going to bed at night regretting what I spent my day doing. And I don't want to do that anymore, and I don't want you to do it. I want to go to bed at night and be proud of what I got done that day. Yeah. Amen? What are you doing with what God has given you? A.W. Tozer said this, and I think this is awesome. A man by his sin may waste himself 
which is to waste that which on earth is most like God. <laughs> you here on earth are more like God than anything else here. And he's saying, if you waste yourself, then you're wasting the thing that is the most like God. This is man's greatest tragedy and God's greatest grief. You know, waste of any kind is sad, and certainly the waste of an entire life is the saddest of all. And um, how many of you know somebody that has just wasted their whole life? Okay. Well, I think we all do. My dad did that, and uh, it's so sad to see somebody in their 80s on a walker, gray hair, all wrinkled up, who's pretty much alone and has nothing left but regrets. I will not live like that. I am not going to get to the end of my life and have nothing left but regrets. And the only way that you can not have regret tomorrow is to do what's right today. Today, we need to start making right choices. If God is dealing with you about anything in your life and you know that you need to be obedient to him and you're putting it off for another day, I think tomorrow is maybe the most dangerous word that we have in our English language. I'll do that tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow. Well, what if Jesus comes today? <laughs> Thank you. It wasn't a loud clap, but nonetheless, it was a clap. How many of you understand what I'm trying to do here today? <laughs> I'm trying to move somebody to make some decisions. I'm trying to move somebody to stop just waiting for somebody to come and wave their hand over you and make it all right. I'm yelling to somebody, get up! It's time to get up and start doing something with what God has given you. Well, I just don't know what God wants me to do. You know what? Half the time when I come up here, I don't have a clue what God wants me to do. And I've got a message, but I'll tell you one thing. I've never come up here and not had God work through me. And if you will take a step, God will work through you. Amen? I believe that God hates waste. I don't like to waste God's money. I don't like to waste my time. I don't, I don't want to waste my energy. Do you know that every day that you spend angry is a day that you have totally wasted? Totally wasted. Every day that you spend feeling sorry for yourself, it's a totally wasted day. It's completely unproductive. It does not help your future in any way, shape, or form. It just keeps you stuck in the same spot. Come on, we're talking about making some decisions today. You know, we're always spending something. <laughs> you're spending your time, you're spending your energy, you're spending your money. Now like today, you have spent, by the time you leave, you will have spent, well, two hours and 15 minutes from the time the service started, and some of you probably got here early, and so, Let's just say, let's just say even if you spent three hours here today. Okay, well that's time well spent because, you know why? This is going to help you tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. But you could have went out for coffee with two friends and sat and gossiped for three hours about everybody else you know. And that's not going to make you feel good. You'll be unhappy later today and won't even know why. <laughs> but now today, you're going to have a much better day because you're sitting there having life ministered to you. What does the Bible say? If you sow to the Spirit, you will reap from the Spirit life and life eternal. And if you sow to the flesh, you will reap death, ruin, decay, and destruction. Amen. Make good choices. Feel good about the choices that you're making. Amen? I figured out yesterday, 
And I'm down the road a ways with this, so don't, I'm not asking anybody to do what I'm doing, but I started working out with weights 11 years ago, and, uh, and I did that three hours a week. It would take me an hour three times a week, and I had a trainer. Well, about a year and a half ago, I started adding walking, and I got up to five miles every day. And so I spend about 17 hours a week exercising. Okay, now, I, and I'm not trying to impress you. I'm trying to make a point. Okay, because I, before I got up here to teach this, I took an inventory of my time. How much time do I spend watching TV? How much time do I spend sleeping? How much time do I spend doing this? How much time do I spend doing that? How much time do I spend with God? And I'm finding it to be interesting because we often say life just goes by in a blur. Well, sometimes we need to take the time to think about what we're doing with the time that we have. Take the time to think about what you're doing with the time that you have. The only way that we can ever make any changes in our life is to take an honest look at it and say, what am I investing? What am I wasting? What would God have me change? You know, we're always adjusting and making changes in our lives. If you're never willing to change anything, life will never get any better. Remember what I said last night? You can't just keep doing the same thing over and over thinking you're going to get a better result. Let's maximize our life. Let's maximize our time. I like that word maximize, don't you? The devil wants to minimize us. But God wants to maximize us. That means to do the most you can with what you have, not the least that you can. Don't ever be the kind of person that just does barely enough to get by. Always go the extra mile. Let me tell you how that works. Get to work five minutes early, not five minutes late. Yeah, I thought I'd get a few giggles on that one. <laughs> Don't leave messes for somebody else to clean up. Let's get personal. If you use the last of the toilet paper, replace the roll. If you use the last Kleenex in the box, go replace the box. Don't just be glad you got the last one and then leave work for somebody else to do later on. Come on, you, you know, sometimes you think you shouldn't have to tell people this kind of stuff, but you do. You know, Paul told people how to dress. Sometimes I have to tell people how to dress. Some women just don't seem to get it. It's like, really? We don't want to see that. Sometimes I'm just like, give me a break. <laughs> really? Whew. Go the extra mile. <laughs> if anyone forces you to go one mile, go two. <laughs> well, why should I do that? You know what? To be excellent. God is an excellent God and he has called us to be excellent and that means that you always do what's right especially when nobody's looking. See, this became to me a very precious principle early in my walk with God. I'd been born again for a long time but in 1976 when God touched my life with the power of his spirit and called me to do what I'm doing now, I was not able to go off to Bible college somewhere. I didn't have any formal training to do what I'm doing. But God will let you go to the school of the Holy Ghost if you're willing to do that. And what that means is God can take every single thing in your life, ordinary, everyday, mundane things, and he can teach you a powerful spiritual lesson right where you're at. And you hear me tell my funny little stories about putting your grocery cart back and doing different things like that. But you know what? Those things are precious to me because I was not an excellent person. I was not a person who always went the extra mile. And God was calling me to do something big, but he had to 
make me an excellent person. I couldn't go off somewhere and somebody teach me to be excellent. He taught me by using the things in my everyday life. I remember the first time the Lord said, don't leave that out there, put it back. Okay, now here's the thing, and I'm just going to be honest with you. It took me two years. We're talking 1976, 1977. I was teaching a little home Bible study with 20 people in it, and I'd still be there if I wouldn't have learned how to put my grocery cart back. And see, a lot of people think, well, that's just silly. That has nothing to do with anything. It has everything to do with everything. It's what you do behind closed doors when nobody's looking that you do unto God just for Him because you believe it's what He wanted you to do that makes you a great person. How to develop character in an image-driven age. Today we care more about how many people we have on our Facebook account than getting prepared for eternity. It took me two years to obediently put that grocery cart back every time I went to the grocery store. Whether it was cold, whether it was raining. And I could just hear oh, the Holy Ghost, put it back. Put it back. Well, everybody else, you see, you're not everybody else. You're not everybody else. That's the problem. I don't care what everybody else does. We are not everybody else. We represent the Most High God. Amen? And I got all kinds of stories like that. I'm not going to get into them again. I'm sure that you've heard a lot of those stories. Do what's right, especially when nobody's looking. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that and that only. <laughs> you know, you can change some things in your life. Honestly and truly, every one of us can change some things in our life. You know, if you're frustrated all the time and feel like you're too busy all the time and like you're on overload and you're about to go over the edge and you're cranky with people all the time because you're so busy. Well, no sane person should be expected to do everything that I'm doing. How could you possibly expect me not to be frustrated with my life? <laughs> Sound like anybody you know? You know what? If you don't like your schedule, change it. I mean, really, who's making you do everything that you're doing? <laughs> come on, don't make me come out there. Who's making you do... <laughs> I say stuff like that and you're like change my schedule yeah just try saying no I can't do that no I can't sign up for that I'm already too busy no I won't be going no junior you're not going to play on another ball team you're already playing on three and I'm not going to spend my life driving you back and forth Be an on-purpose person. We need to start taking our lives back and stop letting what's going on in the world rule us. You don't have to answer the phone just because it rings. I'm still trying to teach myself that. Oh, we're so curious. I mean, if that thing rings, we just can't stand it. If it beeps, you've got to go get it and find out who might need you. Because after all, we are so important. Somebody needs me. Don't you ever get tired of the beeps and the dings that the phone makes? I've got something wrong with my equipment right now. I've tried, my son is just, he needs to get over and fix it. When my phone rings, my iPad rings, and my computer rings. And so I'm sitting with my phone, and after I've answered it, if I've got my computer on my lap, my computer's still ringing, and then my iPad's over here, and it's ringing. And whoever I'm talking to says, what's all the ringing? <laughs> well, it's because you called me.
How many of you feel like you need a change in your life? Were you hoping that I would wave my hand over you today? <laughs> oh, listen, we got people here today that you came and said, God, please just have Joyce give me a word. <laughs> I just need a word. Well, I am giving you a word. <laughs> and words and words and words and words and words and words. <laughs> and I'm not going to wave my hand over you. <laughs> I'm going to say, get up. Okay, so let me just tell you a few things that you can do on purpose. You can obey God on purpose. Now remember, we don't have anybody who wants to be really victorious. You don't have the luxury of always doing what you feel like doing. <laughs> anybody who really wants to have victory in your life. I mean, you really want to have a really good life. A life you can enjoy, be happy, be peaceful. You do not have the luxury of always doing what you feel like doing. Just don't. Because see, discipline means that I'm going to pay the price now for something good later. No discipline for the present seems joyous. Hebrews 12. Nevertheless, later on, does anybody anymore care about later on? Yes. You know the mentality that we have in the world today. I want something free. Well, can I tell you a secret? Free doesn't really exist. And I'll tell you why. You might get something free, but somebody else had to pay for it. The gospel is free to us, but Jesus paid for it. You're enjoying a free conference here, but somebody paid for it. Okay. And we've got to be careful about just wanting so much free, free, free. And let me just throw this out. People are sitting around waiting for the government to give them something free. Now just stop and think. They don't have any money. And they can't give you anything free if they don't take it away from somebody else. Free? Free? Free education, free this, free that. Come on, get out of dreamland and stop waiting for somebody to wave their hand over you and make your life lovely. Amen? <laughs> you know, Dave and I come from a generation where, I mean, my gosh, things have slid downhill so far. Some of you that are only maybe 20 or 30 years old, you have no idea how far things have slid downhill. I mean, back when I was growing up, people that weren't even Christians behaved better than a lot of Christians do today. And I'm telling you, we need some good, strong word coming from the pulpit. I've shook my head so much, I've shook off my jewelry. Can't preach without earrings, that won't work. They have something to do with the anointing. I'm not sure what it is. But something. We can obey God on purpose. We can forgive on purpose. There's so many angry Christians. Don't waste another day of your life angry. Well, you just don't know what they did to you. 
Well, whatever they did to you, if you stay angry, you're just letting them continue to do it to you day after day after day. How long are you going to let what they did to you keep making you miserable? Come on. If you want to make the devil mad, get happy. That's the only way to get the devil back. Get happy and do good. We overcome evil with good. Sitting around hating somebody is not getting the devil back.